God is good? And all the time? I just want to make sure you know that it's Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to everyone. Can we celebrate mothers? That'd be great. Awesome. Uh, And ladies, I want to make sure that you are aware that we have these wonderful crumble cookies after the service. If you walk through the atrium into the family center, there's a bunch of cookies there, a couple places to take pictures. And I thought if I uh, were to make this announcement, this would be the most, the best way I could secure my own cookie by, you know, just, it's all for you, right? The announcement is for, for you today. But uh, we're glad that you chose to worship with us today. My name is, is John. I am blessed to serve as the pastor here. I want to invite you to find your way to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. And we are uh, going to be talking about Mary, the mother of Jesus. And we're going to really learn some things, I think, from Mary and her disposition and her attitude and how she uh, approached serving and even surrendering her life uh, to the Lord today. But I do want to take a moment because I get to be up here is to say happy Mother's Day to a few special people. I'm thankful that pretty much every Sunday I get to worship with my mom and my mom is here. So mom, would you wave at us? You want to make you stand? All right. Happy Mother's Day. And uh, also my mother-in-law is right down here. You want to wave at us too and get to embarrass all of them. And then, of course, my wife is here. So happy Mother's Day to all of them. And I'm thankful for them. Uh, Could we, before we really get into the message today, could I just ask all mothers to stand for a moment? And uh, yeah, we can celebrate all the mothers in the room. Thank you, thank you. Great to celebrate you moms. You can stay standing, stay standing, sorry. I just want to pray over you, okay? That'd be all right. And uh, let's pray over these wonderful ladies. God, we thank you for how you've designed us differently. And Lord, we want to honor and celebrate uh, the mothers and the ladies in the room today. Lord, we're thankful for uh, their investment in us and their children, their grandchildren, some even their great-grandchildren. And Lord, we, we know that being a mother is difficult, and, uh, and so we just say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for these special ladies. I pray, Lord, today that you would bless them, uh, that as we honor them, you would continue to put your blessings upon them, provide for them, protect them, and Lord, let them know today that, that of course, you love them, and we love them as well. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Again, I appreciate uh, you. And uh, I want to just take a moment. We're in this series, as you can see on the screen here, Women of Worth. It's kind of a short mini series sandwiched on either side of Mother's Day, talking about some important women in the Bible. Last week, we talked about Ruth from the book of Ruth. And we saw that that Ruth was really a picture uh, of us as individuals, but also as the church and the church being those who've decided to follow Jesus. And in the story, Boaz, who's known as the close relative, I think in chapter three and four, it uses that word like 10 or 11 times, close relative, that simply means redeemer or kinsman redeemer. And Boaz is the picture of, of Jesus, the, the great Redeemer that would come. And so in the story, we see that Ruth, it was kind of a weird, you know, we, I don't even want to say the word I said last week because the song just continued to play to my head. But Ruth asked Boaz, would you marry me? It's kind of strange. Like if we think it's strange today, I mean, in that, that culture, way more strange, but, but really what she was asking because she said, would you be my close relative? She was asking, would you be my redeemer? What was Boaz's answer to Ruth? Yes or no? You guys don't sound confident at all. I'm gonna ask you again. What was Boaz's answer, yes or no? Yes. Yes. 
Now let's think about that for a moment, the importance. We can't, I don't want to just gloss about it. I know we went into depth last week. But what that means is this, is if Ruth pictures us as individuals, if she pictures the church, which are followers of Jesus, and Boaz represents or pictures Jesus, when Ruth asks, Jesus will, or excuse me, Boaz, will you be my redeemer? He said, yes. The same is true for anyone in the room today. If you've never asked Christ to come in your life and to forgive you and to redeem you, then in this story, you are Ruth. In the story, Jesus is Boaz. And he would say, if you would simply ask him this morning, Jesus, would you redeem me? What would Jesus say? Yes. Yes. It's that simple. And I don't, I don't want to move on to the next story this morning without giving you that opportunity just to say, if you would like to receive Jesus into your life, to surrender your life to him and receive grace and forgiveness and to be redeemed, the scripture says, by the blood of the lamb, Jesus, you simply have to cry out to him. Jesus, will you redeem me? We don't have to stop the service for that. You can do that right now, right where you're seated. Cry out to God, God, Jesus, would you redeem me? And we saw at the end of the book, right, that at the end of the book, it says that they had a child, Obed. Obed beget Jesse, and Jesse beget David. And now that's kind of where we pick up the story, right? We're going to see that name David again, all right? So um, I'm, I'm curious this morning. How many of you would consider yourself to be a fearful person? Anybody fearful in here? Just don't be afraid. Raise your hand, all right? I'm not going to call you out or anything. Because, like, the number one fear is getting up here and speaking, right? So any fearful person? No. All right. How many of you would say, no, I'm not fearful? I'm, I'm courageous. Raise your hand. Anybody? Not too, I'm really not afraid of too much, honestly. Um, I'm not smart enough to be afraid of much, I think. I asked this question on Facebook. What are you afraid of? L- let's just try this. On the count of three, I just want you to yell out the first thing that comes to your mind. What are you afraid of? Ready? One, two, three. What are you afraid of? All right. Very good. So in my Facebook post, it was heights. Anybody scared of heights? All right. Uh, spiders. Anybody scared of Spiders. I really wanted to put some spiders in the pews today just to be like, like plastic ones. You know, just so you can honor and, and appreciate my mom more. When I was a, in high school, we used to go, my, bro, my brother and I would go into the sanctuary during the, the middle of the week. And the, the church we were at, they didn't have padding on the back of the pews. And so a lot of the older ladies would have pillows that they would sit and we would just go switch all the pillows just to to make everybody, I'm not sure why I'm telling that story. (laughs) Oh, spiders in the pew, that's what it was. You never know where my brain's gonna go, right? Birds, who's scared of birds? All right, my daughter is deathly afraid of birds. And one day when she was at Sonic, you know, with the window down, a bird flew into her car. That's crazy. She's also scared of snakes. One day we were driving a rental car and she screams bloody murder from the passenger seat. And you know, she could scream about different things, right? But this was something different. And she swore there was a snake that came up out of the floorboard from her seat in between her legs. How many of you would freak out a little bit? How many of you think I believed her? I didn't believe her at all. I was like, I, we pulled over, I'm looking, I see no snake. And then about a month later, I told him when I dropped the car off, uh, my, my daughter says there's a snake in the car. He called me about a month later and said, well, we did find the snake skin. I'm like, oh. Anyways, snakes. What are you afraid of? Let's, let's transition that question to, you know, from snakes, heights, spiders, Are you afraid of God asking you to do something? That changes the dynamic of the question a little bit, right? Anybody ever thought, I mean, when I was a kid, 
you know, there was a song that said, please, Lord, don't send me to Africa. Anybody ever heard of that in church? Missionaries go out around and sing it. And it seemed like every time that people would use the, the like, I don't want to surrender to God because he might send me to Africa. Then I, I went to Africa and I actually love Africa, right? But what, what, I guess I'm trying to get to the question, is it possible this morning that God has been trying to get your attention, that God is asking you to do something, and you're just too afraid? And possibly God already knows your heart. He knows that whatever he asks, you're going to say, no, I whatever. But I think what we're going to see in the story of Mary today is that Mary lived a life of openness, of surrender. That Mary had lived her life to say, God, whatever you want of my life, I'm willing to do it, even if it scares me a little. And, and so my, as, as we walk through this story this morning, my challenge for you this morning is to maybe get to that place. Because the truth is, everyone in the room today, there is something God wants you to do. I'm convinced that every one of us in the room today, there is a next step to take. Two weeks ago, we got to see seven people take the next step of their faith by publicly proclaiming Jesus through baptism. Wasn't that exciting to watch? I even heard one of them that got baptized gave his testimony today in one of the early Connect groups, and that was his next step of faith. Everyone has a next step. Some of them are big. Somebody told me this week they were watching, hoping I would fall off this stage one time. How many of you, that's you? How many of you are scared of me standing here? Okay. What's your next step? Well, Mary was not afraid. So let's, let's look at the text. And I want to give you two reasons why I think that we often are fearful of, like, what's God going to ask me to do? The first one is this. God's invitations often feel like interruptions. God's invitations often feel like interruptions. Can you identify with that? Yes or no? Ever felt like God's interrupting your life? I got a good thing going here, God. What are you, what are you doing? Let's look at the story. Luke chapter 1, verse 26. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having uh, come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is, this is a great statement, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Verse 29, but when she saw him, she was, what's the word? Would you be troubled if the angel showed up? Like, I don't, I think what we typically see pictured as an angel, you know, like blonde hair, blue eyes, maybe looks a lot like me, um, <laughs> with wings, you know, pretty face, all the perfect whatever. That's not, I don't think that's the picture of Gabriel. Because every time Gabriel shows up, what does he always have to say? Don't be afraid, right? Fear not. Always. In fact, we don't get a lot of description. One thing, we, it never says that Gabriel had wings. Like, I think he's a warrior. He's fierce. And again, every time he shows up, it's like, she is troubled. Verse 29, she was troubled at a saying, consider what manner of greeting this was. So let's just for a second give the backstory because we jump in and it says now in the sixth month. This isn't saying the sixth month in the, the calendar, okay? This is saying, this is followed up from the first 25 verses in Luke chapter 1. And it begins in Luke chapter 1 with Zacharias, the priest, going in to pray. Gabriel shows up to Zacharias and says, Your wife Elizabeth, who's barren and old in old age, the angel said it, not me, in old age is going to have a child. And this child is going to name him John, and he's going to be the forerunner of Christ. Fast forward 30 years from this point, and we see John the Baptist standing there as Jesus walks down the road. And what does John the Baptist say? 
Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. There's a fulfillment of what Gabriel said was going to happen right here in Luke chapter number 1. At the end of one well, verse like 23 and 24, Elizabeth basically goes in hiding for five months. What is God doing? And we pick up verse number 26. Now in the sixth month. So it's talking of the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy. What God has been doing, God has been silent for 400 years and all of a sudden silence is broken with Gabriel's announcement that there would be a baby born named John who's going to be the forerunner of the one Jesus, the Messiah. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And he comes, Gabriel, to this girl who most theologians and scholars would say between 14 and 16. A normal Jewish girl. What did we read? That she was betrothed. Most similar we would understand as engaged. But legally they were married. They just hadn't had the ceremony. Joseph traditionally and culturally would probably been back at mom and dad's house building a room on so he can go get his bride and then they're going to have the ceremony and everything is going to be finished, right? Their husband and wife. And most likely, and it was arranged marriage. Like the plans have been set. Everything is in order. From the time that she was old enough to understand her purpose and plan in life, this was what it was. That she would be married and have kids and be a housewife. And everything had lined up like it was supposed to happen. And then the angel shows up. And wouldn't you think if you were Mary that this might could see maybe like an interruption. You, you, are you guys tracking with me? All right, make sure we're, we're all on the same page. And this interruption was actually an invitation, wasn't it? And, and we see that all through scripture. Moses was minding his own business finally in being a shepherd in the burning bush. Was an invitation. Saul was persecuting Christians on the road to Damascus, and God gave him an invitation that was probably felt like an interruption. David was simply taking lunch to his brothers, and the giant shows up, and God gave him an invitation. Joseph was going to see his brothers and check on them, and they sold him into slavery, and seemed kind of like a an interruption. I just got interrupted by a phone call, by the way. <laughs> Who's trying to call me? Probably Carlos, but. <laughs> Joseph's life over and over seemed like a lot of interruptions. Like the brother sold him into slavery. Then he's kind of making his way up, and now he's back in prison again. And you remember what Joseph said in Genesis 50, verse 20? What you intended for harm God meant for good. And so sometimes God's invitations seem and feel like interruptions. It made me think of this quote. Some of you may know this quote. Thomas Edison said, most people miss opportunity because it's dressed in overalls and looks like work. (laughs) Can you identify with that? So why do we fear His invitations, I think first, God's invitations often feel like interruptions. Number two, God's invitation often redirect our plans. How many of you like to plan things out? How many of you like to just go with whatever happens? Okay, you're my people, all right? Whatever happens is going to happen. I like to say it's, you know, a spiritual gift of mine. Well, God's in control, so it's okay, but... I think I'm just naturally don't care. All right. Verse 30. Then the angel said to her, like this is a dumb moment, right? Don't be afraid. I mean, you would think Gabriel at some point realized, I must, I must be a little freaky looking because everyone when I show up is, is scared. Don't be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the son of the the highest. And the Lord will give him the throne of his father, 
David. This ties us back to Ruth, doesn't it? Because Ruth walked in obedience, we see that her son was like the great-great-grandfather of King David. Verse 33, he will reign over the house of Jacob forever in his kingdom. There will be no end. Again, it, it's really, I think it's probably, at least it is for me, it's hard to really identify with how planned out her life was. But can you imagine as this 14, 15-year-old girl that she knows what the next step is, right? She's just been surrendered to God, got whatever you want, and it seems like, oh, I'm supposed to marry Joseph. I'm just waiting patiently for that day when he's going to come get me, and, and then we're going to live happily ever after. And all, all of her plans are made. Everything is, is good, right? Can you, you know, I, I know that there's definitely a difference between men and women, right? And you women probably thought, a lot of you thought about that wedding day for a long time and the plans. And, you know, my daughter got married about two years ago. Well, it's over two years ago, almost three years ago now. And she had thought a lot about it. You know how much I thought about the wedding ceremony the day until I got married? Zero. I, I hope it happens. I really didn't think about, oh, should we have candles? You know, back in the day, that was a thing, right? You, have the, you guys remember the candelabras? I hate candelabras, can I be honest with you? Because as a kid, you know, being a twin, my dad being a preacher, there always needs to be two, two candle lighters. Guess who got to do that at a lot of weddings? <laughs> I might be bitter, just a little bit. But she, she had a lot of plans. Here's a news flash. God's plans are not always our plans. But his plans are better than our plans. So sometimes it brings a little fear. God, I, I had this all planned out. You're changing the plans on me. And Isaiah, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my way, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Proverbs says, a man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. And I don't know, maybe there's some fear. I've got everything planned out just like I want it. I sure hope God doesn't change him. Could we, could we just agree that there's a possibility that you may have thought that once in your lifetime? Could you agree with that? Just shake your head yes. Could we agree that it's a possibility that you're thinking it right now? If you agree with me that everyone in the room has a next step, then the potential for every one of us to have fear of what God is asking us to do is also a potential. Yeah. Jeremiah 29, 11, I love this verse. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. We, we focus a lot of times on the future and a hope and those are great, but I think there's two letters in this verse that just kind of resonate with me. They're both the letter S. For I know the, what is it? Thoughts, plural. Think about that for a moment. The creator of the universe thinks about you. Thoughts. He says, the Lord's thoughts, plural again, of peace. Think about that. Isn't that a pretty amazing to think? God just didn't think of John Haley one time and create him and let him go. Good thing. God continually thinks about me. God continually thinks about you. I think mothers more than dads understand this the depth of that. We learned in our marriage conference a few weeks ago that 
that I'm just thankful to know it's scientific that we as men, we have the ability to think about absolutely nothing. <laughs> Thank you, Steve, for enlightening us. And all the women said, amen, right? Hey, it's scientific. Thank you, Steve. But don't mothers have an innate ability to ponder things? Sometimes worry about things. Or just sit and think, ah, blessings over their own kids. Mothers, do you, is that you? And, and if, you, if God has given you that ability to do that, think about that God does that for us. Thoughts. That God, the creator of the universe, thinks about you. Let's, let's get back to the story. Verse number 34. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I have not known a man? Like this seems like a pretty legit question, right? This is impossible. And maybe this morning, the next step for you, God is asking you to take, might seem impossible. Like maybe God is inviting you not to give up on your marriage. Maybe God is inviting you to share the gospel with the one that you've been praying for. Maybe God is inviting you to forgive someone. And let's be real this morning, that can seem impossible, right? Maybe it's a simple thing. God's wanting you to join a church or join a connect group. Maybe God's wanting you to give or give to missionaries. Maybe though God is wanting you to surrender everything to him. God, you have total access. Whatever you want from my life, before you've been asked, the answer is yes. I met with one of our uh, college students this week, um, and he's uh, about to leave this Tuesday to go to Mexico for six weeks on a mission trip with uh, like college campus ministry, and he's going to be in Monterey, Mexico. Uh, so we just got to meet, talk about it, and pray over him. And here's what he said. John, I want you to pray because I'm really wondering, I'm really praying that maybe God wants to redirect my plans. Maybe God wants me to, to surrender to full-time ministry. And he's like, I don't know what that looks like, whether that's in college campus ministry, whether that's on a church staff, whether that's being a missionary, like I have no idea. And I told him, I have no idea. I just keep praying. I love, I love the fact that you can sit with a 20-year-old that just says, yes, whatever you want. God, whatever you want of me. Well, I wonder how Mary is going to respond, just in case you don't know. Let's look. Verse 35. And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that holy one, that holy one, I'm going to say it again, that holy one who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now, indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month. There we go. There's the sixth month for her who was called barren. Verse 37. For with God. Why don't we just look on the screen? You may have it on your Bible, but let's look on the screen. Could we read this together? Would that be all right? On the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. For with God. Let's do that again. Do you believe that? Ready? For with God. So what do we really have to be afraid of? Right? If God is asking, verse 38, Mary said, so here's her response. Behold, I am a maidservant of the Lord. You know what that maidservant tells me? That she had already made a decision in her life. Whatever God asks me to do, the answer is what? 
Yes. The word doulos means slave, maidservant. She had already made a decision. Whatever you want, God. Yes. My prayer this morning is that all of us in the room, we would get to that point. Whatever you want, God. Yes. And look what she says. And let it be to me according to your word. God, whatever you want, I'll be okay with it. Do you think she had some fear? Yes or no? Yeah. I mean, it's one thing to say yes to God, but now she's got to go tell mom and dad. She's got to go tell Joseph. And she's going to be that lady when she walks down the street that everyone says, yeah, the Holy Spirit. Right? She's going to be the one in the grocery store everyone's staring at, talking about. I grew up in a small town. I know what that's like, right? There's that Mary. In fact, 30 years from this point, it would be said of Jesus. Remember, this is Jesus, the son of Mary. Like it didn't, the, the talk didn't just go away, did it? And she dealt with a lot that we have no idea that she dealt with. But she had already made a decision. Kind of like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they had, made, they had purpose in their heart. She had purpose in her heart. I'm, I'm, a, I'm the maidservant of God. Whatever you want, yes. You see, obedience is your responsibility. An outcome is God's responsibility. God, I'm surrendering all to you. Whatever you want, even though I'm afraid, what's the answer? Yes. Simply put, what I want you to do today is pray and then obey. That's pretty simple, isn't it? Pray, and what is the word? Pray and obey. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads in prayer right now. I think of this young Hebrew girl who simply walked in obedience, lived a surrendered life, and she got to be the mother of Jesus. Walk in obedience and leave the rest up to God. I would ask real quick this morning, how many of you would say, John, God is, he, he's been talking to me. I know there's a next step, and I'm, if, if we're going to be honest this morning, I've been a little afraid of it. If that's you, would, would you just put your hand up? I just want to pray for you. Just put your hand up, right? There's a lot of us. Just put your hand up. A lot of us. All right. Thank you for, for being transparent. You can put your hands down. I mean, you say, John, I'm not sure God has been asking me anything, but to be honest, I haven't really been that willing to listen. Anybody like that this morning want to raise your hand and confess that, and I can pray for you? All right. A lot of honest people in here. I get that way at times. I have to check my heart all the time. You can, you can put your hands down. So here's, here's the simple thought, right? Pray. And obey. And if you raised your hand, or even if you didn't, my invitation this morning as we sing and close out the service is just to come seek the Lord at his altar. And maybe you need to tell him, God, I'm willing. Maybe you're 16 in here today and you have no idea what the future holds, but maybe today God is just saying, hey, just surrender. Be like Mary and just say, whatever you want, God, I'm willing to do it. Maybe today is the day just to come and to pray and say, God, I, I lay it all out for you. I'm yours. I'm your servant. Whatever you ask, whenever you ask, the answer is yes. Maybe you're 66 in here and you need to pray the same prayer. God, whatever you want, I say yes. So I'm just going to encourage you.
pray and obey. Would you stand with me as I pray? God, we thank you for the gift of Jesus. We thank you this morning that if we will, we, we will ask for you to redeem us, you will say yes. Lord, thank you for the faithful obedience of Mary. I pray, Lord, that in spite of our fear, we will display faith. That our response this morning would be surrender. Whatever you want, God, of me, I say yes. That Christ, well, he's, he's enough. Move in your church this morning. Lord, we love you and we thank you. Again, we're going we're gonna to close the service in song. If you'd like to come and pray, spend some time with the Lord, you're welcome to do so.